Welcome to the world's worst flying nightmare. You're at 9,000 metres, and suddenly, some nutter decides to open the door. Within a second, you're sucked out into oblivion. Could this really happen? The answer is no. Let's go back to the ground, and our nutter is waiting by the closed door. The pressure inside and outside the plane is roughly the same. But as the plane rises, the pressure outside drops. At 9,000 metres, the higher pressure inside the cabin seals the door into the fuselage, wedging it with a force equivalent to 5,000 kilograms. Which means there's no way any nutter could ever pull it open. Happy flying. Now it's time for some aeronautical engineering. Don't tell this lot they're making paper plates. To them, this is advanced applied paper-formed aeronautics. What you're looking at are the aeronautical engineers of the future, a group of students who have just entered a paper plane making competition. Well, we all have to start somewhere. They learnt their crimping skills at the University of Leeds under the watchful eye of Andrew McIntosh, Professor of Thermodynamics and Combustion Theory. That's burning stuff to you lot. What they did was make their paper aeroplanes with some of the aeronautical principles which there are in aeroplane making. This, this little paper aeroplane is actually flying by exactly the same principles as your big jumbo jets crossing the Atlantic. But will advanced engineering knowledge, when applied to the humble paper plane, get you something better than your average classroom dart? Visually, it seems we're onto a winner here. You get models like the Spruce Moose, the Hornet, and the Mighty Avenger, winner of the competition's prize for the best design. And there's also this one, which looks a bit like the sort of thing I made in class. But why do planes or paper darts fly in the first place? First up, there's the wings. On fancy planes, they're called aerofoils. But you may have noticed that paper planes usually have flat wings. Ooh. They fly in a much simpler manner. The angle of the flat wing deflects the air downwards. This means that the wing and anything attached to it, like a plane, for instance, is pushed upwards. Action and reaction, simple but effective. Want to know what it feels like? Stick your hand out of a car window like this. But real planes, and some of the more complex designs flown in the competition, seem to have all sorts of things dangling off their wings. Ailerons and other devices on aeroplanes are very simple uh, things, really, to understand. Most wings have flaps, which increase the lift when the aircraft is at low speed. There are other devices called ailerons, which help turn the airplane. And on some aircraft, there are additional winglets at the tips, which improve the overall efficiency of the wing. This picture shows hooded cranes in flight, and they've got little winglets which reduce drag at the side. These actually are great designs, which, of course, the great designer has already put there in nature. And uh, we can do well to actually copy those designs. But does it all work? Just because it's got a complex design, does it mean it'll fly better? Let's see how the Avenger, with its flaps and winglets, does. A staggering 2.09 seconds. Next, it's the Hornet. Going for maximum climb and recording a gravity-defying 3.5 seconds. Finally, the Spruce Moose. Nothing fancy here, just a common classroom dart and... Whoa, an amazing 5.3 seconds, which is only 22 seconds off the world record, but proof that when it comes to making paper planes, a simple design wins out every time. Unless somebody really knows what they're doing with these flaps and ailerons, they're going to very quickly move into regions where, rather than being a help, the, the flaps and the ailerons and all the other things, uh, the winglets, are probably going to reduce the amount of forward speed. And it's the forward speed that is vital to keep 
the plane going for as long as possible. So for competitions like the one we had, it's hardly surprising that it was the simple ones which actually were the ones which were more successful. Um, I came up with this design based on something which I got taught in my secondary school quite a few years back. And um, it, it was the best design that we've found so far. We tried a lot, but disrupt. Well, there you have it. A functional, simple design, well-built, can still beat a complex design.